we have to look our eating patterns. We have our the food that we eat. How much calories it has, and is it nutritionally dense or not? Think over it. What you have for breakfast in the morning, is it nutritionally dense, or it is of empty calories? If it is empty calories, we have to switch over from the empty calories to whole foods, and then from whole foods to nutritionally dense food. We use oils. but most of our oils have free radicals the oils the when we are using the on a high heat the bonding is broken when the bond is broken it becomes free radical and then it becomes dangerous for our health because free radical means our body cells begin to disintegrate begins to deteriorate and then the aging process begins when you are youthful then it's okay so we have to include but our diets have either the unsaturated fatty acids which is soy bean oil corn oil safola oil sunflower oil so we have to switch over from that to the whole foods then you have to look into the when we go into the oils we will discuss it in detail but first of all it is important the quality of the food that we eat whole food means that which have the whole grains not processed food the flowers that we use we are accustomed to using is processed the whole wheat flour that we call it is processed flour to that we add wheat bran and wheat germ the flowers that we use processed food that we use does not have omega 3 omega 6 and omega 9 fatty acids these are necessary for development of the brain cells if we do not have this the children are born with a lot of deformities because long time we used to work physical labor we eat healthy diets i never grew up eating pizza when i was in india we never eat pizza so somebody you know they you have to show off some to someone that you have eaten pizza you know what is pizza so person ask how what is pizza like i said you know pizza you take a piece of roti and on that we put the vegetables that is called pizza but that is not exactly it is it is slightly different but that is a processed food but we can change that uh, even but most of the italian food the american food is processed and then we use coke pepsi and these causes degeneration of our cells couple years back there was operation done on the indian matney idol amitabh bachchan the operation took about 9 hours and the person inquired what it was from the doctor what it was so on inquiry it was discovered that amitabh has verticular disease verticular disease means the large intestine begins to form verticular begins to swell and in common language it begins to rot how does it happen it happens with the processed foods when we are using the processed flour processed food means spaghetti pasta the all kind of noodles we use the the pizzas which is used with the white flour so all these cause they they are come in the category of the processed foods or use of to make tobacco use of alcohol cigarettes some people eat the tobacco just so and coca cola or pepsi cola amitabh bachchan was brand's ambassador for 10 years for pepsi cola he was given 100 crores of rupees for being the brand's ambassador and the same time an agreement was signed me he was to sign the agreement as long as pepsi cola is in india he will not speak anything against pepsi 
and if he does so, he has to pay the company the damages to the tune of 500 crore rupees. So when the person told Amitabh, he said he cannot do that, but he stopped and uh, the, after the doctor told him, he stopped drinking coke and he stopped drinking uh, advertising, but he cannot speak. It also comes with the use of the pork fat, pork and beef to some extent. Now these things are dangerous for our health. They, what is whole food? Do we have to take the food in our hand whole and eat it? No. It is the grains which are in natural form and we can use it in the same form as well as when we use the stone grind flour, then it becomes a whole food. Now you can increase the whole foods in your diet by using the grains like uh, the brown chana which is chickpeas, moon beans, the other beans you can use them. You can soak them, moon beans and chana can be soaked and sprouted and you can sprinkle the lime, a little bit of salt, you can eat it just so or you can soak it and boil it and saute it with uh, the onion, jeera and you can eat it just so. This is the whole food. Then we can include the whole foods in our diets. Now I will come back to that there, the, how the wheat is processed. So this is very, very important that our cells get the whole foods. So the degeneration begins to stop. There was a person in China, he was born in 1677-18. So it's not, it is our era. And he died in 1933. At the age of 256 years, I will show you subsequently his photograph. In China, the in Chinese names are a little difficult to pronounce because you know Cheng Chong Chung, we don't know what it is. Yuan, uh, uh, something name is there. I'll show you. He was a herbalist, and he ate goji berry, chia seeds. These are the whole foods, which are not contaminated. And you can include those into your diets. But first of all, you have to know what flowers, what things you are going to use. Weeks ago, I saw a packet of dumpling mix. It was written on it, whole wheat flour, wheat flour, cassava flour, and spices. Now, when you look at it, what is wrong with this advertisement? What is the wrong with the ingredients? People use a lot of things in order to create a false promotion. You will hear the advertisement, one advertisement, a juicy succulent chicken sandwich with a drink for $20 and my friends, that is plenty for 20. What we are going to eat that, and also now, it is said that there we bake our bread fresh. But what are the ingredients that we are using to make the bread? These things we need to be aware of. It. What is the difference between wheat flour and whole wheat flour? All flour comes from wheat. It's a matter of processing the flour and what we are adding, what we take out and what we add. That is important. And why am I going to speak on the flour? What am, why am I going to have give you the information on uh, all these foods that we consume? Because you remember man is consciousness. Consciousness is energy. Man is energy. And energy cannot be destroyed. So at the physical level, the energy comes from the food that we eat. At the emotional level, energy comes from a different source. So if the food is whole, then we are getting the energy at the physical level. 
and when the food is being cooked certain vibrations goes into it the emotions when you are cooking food with an angry mind with heat with a compulsion that you have to cook food nobody else helps you if you do not cook food nobody will have anything to eat we consider many things like that you know if you don't cook food if you are not alive today the people will still survive they will find their own ways and means but we have created a dependency syndrome if i do not create good food you cannot cook so with all these things so the food that we eat it nourishes our body cells and for the nourishing of the body cells what kind of food goes into our cells when we eat salt the sea salt seas are polluted the water is to be purified first and in that process chemicals are used so that salt causes many things so you change that you change the first the input into your food what is the input that you are going to use if we can use organic it is better but organic is very expensive and here in trinidad it is considered to be a rich man's food not for the common people whereas in america you have a whole supermarket called whole food stores and chain of stores even in florida state you will see a number of branches all around and they are sometimes bigger than your so called supermarket they carry everything whole foods all different kinds of things that you can you need for support to supplement your diets to change your lifestyle all these things are okay so the important thing is this what we are putting as input in our, our foods if we cannot use organic we have to switch over from empty to whole foods now we are using the whole foods that when the food is consumed cooked correctly it nourishes your body cells then when the body cells are nourished your emotions are nourished when the food is cooked and the subtle vibrations that go into the food this is why we offer the food in the form of prayers and we say that they let this food be the divine food you can do it the moment you start cooking with that loving ness with that meditative approach cooking lovingly cooking meditative then the food becomes a divine food not that whether it is cooked with the uh, the whole wheat with the other things but anything can be converted into a divine food once the emotions or our understanding is like that you look at the thing that meera drank the poison because of her devotion because of her lovingness that poison did not affect her it is not a story it is a real fact and this happened nearly about 500 or 600 years ago this man in 1933 he died at the age of 256 healthy survived 23 wives and 200 descendants so it is a very strong healthy person and when the energy reaches the physical energy then you have something you have saved and you can use at the time of emergency now how one can enter into the different layers of energy three layers of energies are there the first layer is called the physical energy which comes with our food that we eat the way it is cooked whether the our food incorporates the whole grains whole foods cooked balanced then it will start giving the physical energy but the physical energy begins to deplete at a certain level then the second layer that is as if that layer you have the a building that has different channels doors first you enter from there to here that is the physical energy the first door 
with the food you cross the first door and you enter into the first channel, first room. Now you have come home tired. You tell your children and the family that you are tired. Don't wake me up. I'm going to take a rest. All of a sudden, there is a news comes in, or there is a blackout, or danger, or anything, or somebody, your friend that you have not met for the longest while suddenly comes, and you are informed that look, that person has come. You jump out of the bed. Where do you get that energy? That energy, suddenly that particular circumstance and situation has opened the second door of the energy and you reach the second level. Second level which is the emotional energy, which is more intense. We can incorporate that energy into our food by being loving and meditative by cooking the food. And also when you're cooking the food, you are doing it as an expression of your love. But if you have not experienced within, you cannot put into that. You cannot share it. First, you have to experience within. Be yourself, know yourself, and then you have reached to the center, then you can start disseminating it. There was no need for me to cook food this morning. Was there any need? But why did I cook? To show off to the people that I can cook, that is not the criteria either. All those people who come here, they already know. It is, people are coming to my place, they are coming to attend the session. The session when they start, somebody said that there is only three hours, we don't need to cook the food. I said, no, it is necessary because people are coming from a different places. Somebody who is coming from far off may take about an hour or so. So they may start 8 o'clock from home. So they will have the breakfast or something there at 8 o'clock. That is not that time you are going to have a happy meals. Then 12 o'clock you will finish. Then you go out from here. While the session is going on, you are thinking, where do I going to get something to eat? You know, and what, what I will get here this side? And if you are particular about food, then you are not going to buy the food each and every place. And by the time you reach home, it is one o'clock. If you are a housewife, and, and unless you had made the arrangement in advance, you have to look for what is going, what you are going to eat. So this was the criteria behind my uh, the, uh, project that I must provide a mid-morning snack mid-morning snack with something so that the session goes on there and it is important and you remember Jesus used to transform the people give them things to eat and drink and then used to talk and all business talks takes place over dinner and lunch no business deals happens without lunch and dinner when people are eaten then they can listen so it is for and it is an expression of my own joy, understanding the human nature, human psychology. This should be the criteria when you are cooking food. When you are cooking, you should be happy that someone has given you the opportunity to cook food for you. Not that the other person should feel gratitude that uh, the because the person was coming and you had to cook the food for no. I am thankful to you all. You have given me the opportunity to cook the food and share with you my joy, my insights, my exper experiences and all that. Yeah, this is how the food should be cooked. We are transforming the food at the physical level. We are using the whole foods. We are putting the positive energies into it. Or uh, the, we are putting the transcending energy because positive has a negative pole also. Because unless the positive and negative neutralize one another, there will be no light. So the two neutralize one another, then it is a state of beyond. Beyond the positive, beyond the negative. And that's where the love is. Neither uh, it is neither this or that. It is something, it is the light. When the positive and negative neutralize one another, then there is a light bulb comes in, your electric fan and everything, appliance begin to work. 
So love is that energy. Understanding is that energy where the, the two opposing, opposing forces neutralize one another and something new is born. When the ovum and sperm merge together, then something else is born which has the quality of the two ovum and sperm both, but it has something of its own. The light has its own, and which is very important. The food becomes light. This is why the Hindus have said, Annam Brahmam, the food is consciousness. When it is cooked that way, then it comes there when these two levels has come from then you go into the third layer of your energy, which is a spiritual energy. Unless you are able to tap to that third layer of energy, you cannot have a long life. You cannot have uh, the, what they call, can incorporate the anti-aging substances, anti-aging process into your being. He is eating the herbalist, the whole foods. So with that there, the whole foods is coming, then the life of meditation comes into it. So it is the three layers. Now one can go into the three layers. You can practice that. The, we can use the technique of meditation. We know the food, we are using the whole food, we know the cooking technique. Now you can start jogging. Simple thing, jog. You reach a level when you jog for 10 minutes, you're that is your threshold point. After 10, uh, 10 minutes, you cannot jog anymore. Your you will tell instructor that I cannot jog anymore. That is the limit. I cannot. If I do, I will fall. But the person, if you go on that, then no, I will continue for another 10 minutes. You have created a barrier in you that you cannot go beyond 10 minutes. But the moment you break that barrier, you cross that threshold, you enter into the second layer and you can continue for another 10 minutes of exercise, 10 minutes of jogging. Then you can go, then again after 10 minutes a limit will come that you cannot go beyond that. The moment you cross, you are tapping that physical, that spiritual energy and your will. Not that emotional circumstance and situation has come that you enter into that that your emotional energy. You can enter into that. You can practice with five minutes of jogging. Then you see that there are five minutes. You can go at the first level. Uh, five minutes make six minutes, then seven minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes. Now I do my uh, morning exercise. The lie on my stomach and raise my hands and raise the uh, from the back. I started doing the 100 first, non-stop, 100. Then one day I decided that no, I am not going to do 100, I am going to do more. Mind says, more than 100? That's not possible. Mind creates the value. Is your enemy. No, 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 it can be done. When others can do, why can't I do it? You can try it but you will never succeed. All right, I decide I am going to do 300. 300. So 100 finish. Then I said after 100, I will give a minute's pause. Then next 100, then next 100. So in the beginning it began like that. Now it is 300 non-stop without a break. So the, when you reach the last 100, your speed, you accelerate. It is like car, you are moving. The first, the car is trying to gain the momentum. You are pressing the accelerator, but the speed you are not gaining. Then the middle layer comes in, you press the same amount of accelerator, the same amount of speed comes in. Then you press the accelerator a little bit, but the speed goes more because the car has gathered the momentum. It has come into the top gear. So a spiritual energy is going into the top gear. Through this method, we can go into the top gear. And we can go into the third layer of our, our energy consciously, knowingly, and willingly. And that is the point when the energy becomes so much, it begins to explode. In a spiritual term, that state, we call it as a state of enlightenment. The light explodes, 
and it begins to ooze through your entire being, not through the words. Whatever you do, it goes into it. Whether you are using the words, the same silence, same joy goes into the words. When you are speaking, the words are overflowing with that energy bubbling that it is that you have uh, generated within you. When you are cooking the food, it is going into the same thing. When you are doing the business activities, the same energy, the same force is going into that. You are somebody comes to meet you, the same force is going. Whether you are silent, whether you are speaking, whether you are in action, energy in action, energy in words, energy in silence. The same thing begins to flow. We are entering, we have learned to know the three layers. This is the process of meditation where we go into the first layer. The, you can begin with jogging. And then suddenly you can use the other things there. Or what you it's can do, the, when you are generating the energy, when you are doing the jogging, it generates the energy. When you are doing any exercise, it generates the energy. Now, energy has a tendency that it cannot be destroyed. When you get angry, the anger has to be dissolved. Either it can hurt the other or it can hurt yourself. So, energy moves from the ends of the nerves the ends of the nerve fingers, ends of the nerve toes. So when you get angry, we shake our hands, shake our feet. So what happens there, when we generate the energy, after the energy is generated, we have to freeze. Like the children like to play the game, Peter says, jump, jump. And for five minutes or two minutes, they jump. All of a sudden, we said stop, and that's a game. So now we stop. What it is happening here? The, in the jumping, the energy is created, generated. But all of a sudden, you freeze. So energy is not moving anywhere, and energy always moves in circles. So what will happen that there? The, it will start going back into your cells of the body, where it is needed the most. That's where it will go. So when I am finished with three hundred. I will just stay there for about 10 minutes just so. So in that, the energy, you will feel that it is surging through the shoulders, it's surging through the back, it's surging through this part or that part, and it reaches there. So freezing, after the doing that, it is very important. You generate the energy, then you have to consume it. Like cooking the food is not important. It's important part, but after cooking, it has to be consumed. You have put your energy into it, now you are bringing that energy back into your system. And that time again, accepting it with gratitude, with love, and then it generates the, uh, the energy that you have generated, it is going into the process of freezing. Now what it is important there, the chewing is directly connected to the uh, activating the process of digestion. The moment you start chewing the food, signal goes to the stomach, the food is coming. Children know food is coming, they start knocking their plates, food is coming. So the stomach knows, digestive process begins, all the different juices, nine different juices are being released in the stomach. So if the food is not there to counteract one of the juices, that will become a toxin in your body. Then it has to be excreted. If it remains within the system, that's why they, we have to detox our body after some time and then the process goes on. We have to use the plunger to clean our the, um, the kitchen sink, the drain or something there. So we have to use that. Then we send the false signal sometimes. We have accustomed habit of chewing gums. When we chew gum, we are, and we feel it very good than when we chew gum. And sometimes when you are talking, the gum comes out and shows as a teeth. You have not looked into how bad that looks. The, it is sending the empty signal to the stomach. Food is coming, 
their stomach begins the process, but no food is coming. All the toxins remain in the body, not being consumed because the juices that are being released, the biles, this and that, and all those things from the liver, um, the all different parts of the body, but it is not consumed. It makes your body ulcerated or acidic. So our foods should be alkaline. So when you consume the acidic food, it becomes alkaline and vice versa. So salt, sugar becomes acidic when you consume in the body. That we will talk when we come to that level. So the initially we need to understand what we are putting into our systems, what we are, how we are cooking. The firstly, the first part is what we are cooking. That is the the gross food. Gross means what we are going to use, the whether it is balanced or not. The whole grains, the proteins, the five category comes the oil, the carbohydrates, the beans, the dairy products, the fresh fruits and vegetables, dry fruits, all these does our food include all these things or not? This is the gross. Then with the gross you are using your ingredients, the subtle vibrations, you are using the, the second, the subtle aspect. You are putting this, that comes through your meditative energy, through your emotions, through your love, through your own understanding, because the Understanding comes when there is a development, there is an inner harmony and oneness that brings the understanding. We are cooking food because it is an expression of my joy. I cannot do otherwise. And that joy has to be expressed in myriad ways through cooking, through sharing. When we cook, then we are sharing the talks meditations. Now there was no need for me to do all these things this morning but it was done. The preparation began before that. Yesterday we make sure we bought whatever was needed, the water and things like these that are needed for this morning because when people are sitting the water is needed, some things mid-morning snack and we need the lunch. So all these things are your expression of your joy. So when, according to your capabilities, according to your own what you have, and the more you give, the more you open the channels of receiving. If you are miser and you don't share, you will not have anything to be with you. So you continue to share, and this is the first talk. I will pause here. The